Welcome on the Deadwood Jedi. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. We're doing the step by step where we look at an account and see how we're going to improve it step by step. And we're going to be looking at Kortha today. We already rebuilt the clan boss team, which was pretty, I, I was actually really impressed with that team. There's, at some point, I'm actually going to highlight that build because it is something that I haven't seen really before, something I hadn't really come up with before. And I think it's actually going to be something that's going to be very helpful for people. Uh, down the road, an affinity friendly team where you don't actually need to bring in anything to block the debuffs, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's very simple, obviously, with the speeds and all that. But uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about and want to show you guys today are the dungeon teams, right? Now, obviously, there's four main dungeons, and the importance of advancing in those versus advancing your clan boss team is pretty 50 50, right? You need to be able to do both, really. Because you need better gear to be able to do better in clan boss and the clan boss is what's going to give you the reward so they kind of go very much hand in hand and this is one like i have a basic takeovers thing that i like to offer which is working on all those things we'll work on the four dungeons and we'll work on your clan boss team and that kind of gets you to a spot where you're kind of on auto you can you know run your dungeons as much as you want get better gear continue to improve and then you can use that stuff to improve various areas of the game, whatever you need at that time, whether that's arena, whether that's doom tower, whatever it is that you're interested in. Now all of a sudden you have the resources with which to really improve that. And so I felt like this is always really, really important. And that's why even an account as early at level as this one on Korthas is going to be helpful. Now this is still, it's not even day. I don't even think it's day 100 at all yet. Right. Still day 99. So just under day 100 here, uh, working on this account. Uh, it's only a level 63 account, so it is very young. We don't have a lot of legendaries on this account. I've shown this before, but basically there's three legendaries on the account at all. Like, and one of them's Rhonda, plus Ghostborn and Alton, Alton not being very helpful. So it's not like this is a big whale account here, but we have the champions to be able to advance. And even though it's maybe not, you know, the optimal champions, like if I had to pick them out of a bag, I would not maybe pick all of these. But the things is that we have the roles that we need to succeed in this stuff. And that's really what it's going to come down to. So as much as I want to show the champions, and I'm going to do that, I'm going to show you some of the champions that we're going to be using kind of quickly so you get an overview over what we're going to be using as we go through this. But I'm going to show you lightly all four of the dungeons, how I rebuilt them, what my approach was with them, um, because... Honestly, the approach with the dungeons is very, very similar, and it's pretty basic once you get the understanding of it. And then it just comes down to optimizing the build and making it work for you. So that's the plan. That's what we're going to do. So let's first take a quick look at some of the champions we're going to be using here. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next one that comes out. And of course, if you enjoyed today's music, we have that link down below in the pinned comment and description of this video, and you can use code DEADWOODJEDI, save yourself 15%. And of course, if you want some account work, you don't like doing the work yourself, I'm more than happy to do it for you. My team is at the beck and call. Just visit my website, deadwoodjedi.com. All right, first, let's look at the teams that I have built, and I have them all saved and built here, and you can see on Dragon, we're using Rhonda, White Dread, Nia, the Mytha, Barak and the Fat, and Sui Ren. For Spider, we're using uh, Ursala the Mourner, Cold Heart. Uh, we got White Dread, Nia, uh, what's, what's her name? The Mytha, and Mordecai. For Fire Knight, Sui Ren, Cold Heart. We've got Ursala, we've got Rhonda, we've got the Mytha. And for Ice Golem, we've got Farak and the Fat, Sui Ren, White Dread, Nia, Ursala, and the mytha now not all these teams are fast run i think the ice golden team is like a six minute run or something like that fire knights like four minute runs but the thing is we're able to do each stage 20 each consistently because of the champions i brought in and you'll notice there's a lot of overlap with these champions right when i bring in champions like sui ren and farak and the fat part of the reason why i'm bringing them in is they're already built for clan boss right same thing with the mytha same thing with white dryad nia these are champs that I have built for other areas of the game already, so why not double up and use them here? When we talk about champions like Ronda, obviously a strong damage dealing champion, so it's a no brainer to bring her in when I can. When I talk about her Saul the Mourner, it's a revive champion, which is gonna be crucial for those dungeons where 
Mm, our survivability maybe isn't as easy to guarantee as with other areas. Cold Heart, Mordecai, they're a little bit more mercenary, right? They're more for specific areas, specific dungeons for specific roles. Mordecai giving us that HP burn for spiders, for example. Uh, Cold Heart to knock down the shield of the Fire Knight, to uh, knock down the Terminator of the Spider and the Fire Knight. You know, very specific kind of roles with these champions. And I think that's really what it comes down to. It's about filling roles for your team. One of the things you're going to notice with each and every one of these teams, maybe with the exception of Spider, is that we're going to have an AoE decreased defense. And that's going to be Sui Ren for pretty much all of these. And we have, and that's just so we can get through the waves as quickly as possible, right? Typically, I'm going to try and pair that with a big damage dealer. In this case, often that is going to be Rhonda, who can wipe out a lot of the waves, or if not wipe them out, take them down pretty low. When I can't bring in Rhonda, I'll bring in someone like Farrakh and the Fat, who can kind of do that in the aggregate with some ally attack abilities. On, the, on top of that, you know, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to bring in some carry champions. And by that, I mean, support champions are going to help keep the rest of the team alive. Now, because we're not high level, I have to rely on multiple champions to do this role. Often it's Demitha because she's just one of the best, one of the best healers in this game. Blocking damage for an entire turn is pretty OP when it comes right down to it. Not to mention extending the buffs that our other support champions are going to be putting out. And the other two that I'm bringing in occasionally are going to be like Ursala the Mourner and White Dryad Nia. White Dryad Nia with the ally protection, strength and buff, uh, tons of healing. All that's really great. And Ursala the Mourner obviously brings in a lot of buffs for us. Increased defense, big strength in, uh, decreased attack as like a debuff to put out there that can help us keep alive. And not to mention, she also has a revive, which is very, very important sometimes when your champions are pretty squishy. And so depending on the dungeon that we're facing, the waves that are coming at us and how well built our damage dealing champions are, those are all going to be champions that are going to be important to bring in. And so that's kind of the idea behind these teams. So let's go in. We can talk specifically about each one of these dungeons. And then at the very end, I'll kind of show you some of the builds. So you have an understanding of like what I'm shooting for as far as the builds themselves go. Now, I figure we can start with Dragon, and one of the big things about Dragon, obviously, is getting through the waves is going to be really important to speeding up our runs. But once we get to the boss itself, it does a lot of HP. It's not super easy to just beat down the boss in raw damage form. So one of the best ways to go about doing it is bringing things like HP burn and poisons and allowing those to tick down the boss himself. Other than that, it's just about surviving. Like It's one of the easier bosses because there's not a lot of tricks to beating him, right? So when we talk about it, this is why I'm bringing champions like Sui Ren. Sui Ren has not just a decreased attack as an, a decreased defense as an AOE, which is a really nice skill. Also has a weaken debuff, which is going to be great for the boss too, and poisons on the A1. And so with all of that makes for a really nice kit as far as trying to take down the boss. Barack and the Fat, very similar, right? We have a really strong, obviously, ally attack and do a lot of damage to the waves and the boss. Uh, but also he brings some poisons and HP burn, which is really important. Not to mention an extra decreased defense, and that's going to be really helpful against the boss itself. Rhonda, of course, Rhonda is a super strong damage dealing champion. And with her Fury Tremor, it's an AoE hit. And that can be really, really powerful. In this Rhonda, I have built in Relentless Gear, which makes her really, really nice to use, honestly. So we're going to be able to get a lot of damage out of her on this. Um, with the Mytha... We're talking about, you know, just staying alive, keeping everybody else alive. Same thing here with White Dryad Nia. That's kind of their roles here on this team is just, you know, survive champions, carry champions, make sure nobody dies. And, you know, obviously, if we had a reviver, if one of those two was a reviver, that would be nice to ensure if somebody goes down, we can bring them back up. But the flip of that is building everybody tough enough where they don't die in the waves and they don't die against the boss. And that can give us more consistency in our run. One of the things you might have noticed uh, with these builds is I have everybody well north of 2,000 defense. In fact, the weakest is Ronda here with only 2,000 defense, but with as many turns as she takes, it's going to be a pretty good chance that she's going to be able to survive anyway and heal up in between attacks. Um, and, you know, obviously champions like Suira and Farak and I have them up like 2,600 defense. I'm using them in clan boss for that. And that just really helps ensure that they stay alive, and that's going to be really, really important for us. So... That's the team. Um, you know, Farrakh and I turned off the A2 ability. We don't really need it till we hit the boss. 
And so at, before then, it's just about dealing raw damage along the way. So this run's not super long. It's not super fast, but it is consistent. And at this stage on this account, that's going to be a great way to go. We get that AOE decrease defense sets up this big hit by Rhonda right there. And we're going to start beating down the boss, the enemies, right? Now, it's not fast. It's not super quick, but we are going to be able to get through it without too much time as a result. Getting that defense break is really, really important to be able to beat down the enemies and do so quickly. And so that's kind of just the goal here is just to get through the waves as fast as we possible without dying. Now, I do have both. I believe Demitha and White Dryadnia happen to be in bolster set. That really helps us survive the initial attacks from the enemy until we start killing people because once we get them down to like this where they only have like three or so allies available until then when all five are out there there's a real strong chance that they're going to kill one of us having that bolster set in the beginning is a really great way to actually help survive those initial hits from the run and so if you're struggling in the initial part until you start killing the enemy that might be a good way to go to help just give yourself a little bit of survivability early on um you see Rhonda right there just ran through all of her buffs, uh, you know, because of that relentless. And this is where, you know, potentially there's an issue. And you can see she's getting targeted because she's fairly weak out there. And if she does die, it's not like going to be the end of the world per se, but it will make our run considerably slower. Um, we'll still be able to get through it. We'll still be able to win, but it is going to affect the timing of it. And, you know, obviously consistency is pretty key to everything here. But you can see again. We've healed up. We have ally protection out there from White Dryadnia. And this is why in this team, having two survive champions is really important. Now, if you're very lucky and you're like my free to play and you have an Elva or you're, you know, you have, I don't even know who, like a Duchess or somebody, a really strong carry champion by themselves, even a Sil the Drake would be an excellent choice. Somebody that can provide healing for your team and revive and some kind of protection. So that's a really nice combination. And then it opens up you to be able to bring in extra champions that can do more damage along the way, as opposed to trying to keep your team alive. And so that's really nice. If you can do that, obviously that's the optimal version of this. But as you can see, it took us about two minutes to get to the boss. It's not a fast run, but it's consistent. And at this stage, consistency is going to be way, way, way more important than the speed is, right? Uh, or the timing of it. So as you can see, we're getting through it. And now it's just a matter of time. We just have to be strong enough, to survive the attacks from the dragon with the ally protection from Nia, with the block damage from the Mytha, that shouldn't be an issue. And then at that point, it's just about putting up as much passive damage as we can or doing raw damage. And Rhonda's really good at doing raw damage. If we can have decreased defense on like we do now, she'll actually beat, she, as you can see, she beats down the dragon pretty quickly. But having champions like Sui Ren and Farrakhan being able to put up things like Poison and HP Burn definitely helps as well and gives us some extra damage counters out there that I think is really important. And that's going to be a great way to add to the damage and make the run overall just a little bit faster and a little bit more consistent. That way, even if we lose Ronda, we do have other sources of damage on this team. And I think that's really good. Um, but there you go. Three minutes, 18 seconds. Actually, that's a new record right there. Yay us. Um, but you can see that's a pretty fast run, pretty effective run, I would say. And uh, yeah, that's not, not too shabby. That's not too shabby. So three minutes, 18 seconds, and we have a decent little run that we can do over and over again. Now, when it comes to Ice Golem, it's going to be a little bit of a different game, right? Ice Golem is really tough, and it's very easy to have champions die just with some wrong timed stuff. So more important than actually getting a lot of damage out there, in, especially when you're just trying to get the consistency of the rundown and get to the, the end boss is going to be making sure you stay alive. So for this boss, I actually brought in three support champions, and that's more than I would like to do. It makes the runs considerably slower, definitely not as effective. Um, but for high school, and especially having things like poison and HP burn is way more important than it would be for other bosses in general. Um, because of the passive ability that this boss brings. So we have Demitha, we have Ursala the Mourner for revive. I think that's going to be really, really crucial to have her in here. Um, that Requiem ability is really strong. The strength is really nice, increased defense. We also have a decreased attack ability on her skills, and that's really going to be very valuable for us. And then we still have White Dryadnia on this team also. And so all three of those are going to be able to combine to make sure our team can survive. Um, we have Sui Ren, 
we have for Rock and the Fat here, both of which can place poisons, and that's going to be really vital for us as far as, you know, trying to beat down the boss without activating their major, you know, bash skill, and so that's a way for us to survive. The hard part is the waves are very, very slow. So as we jump in, it's not a fast approach to this boss. It takes time, and that's the negative about this is they are like five-minute runs, six-minute runs, um, you know, and because of that, this becomes a dungeon that becomes less popular to run. And this is not unusual, right? This dungeon's really hard. The waves are difficult. You know, these penitents, I think they are, that are cleansing themselves. You have the uh, the the doggies on the next wave that are putting up reflect damage and can be really problematic. So it's definitely, definitely not as easy to do. Now, I could bring in Rhonda for this team, and we can have some semblance of success but it's gonna be we're also gonna have some more option opportunities to die and that's not something that we want right so having champions die during throughout this is pretty inevitable i think so that's one of the reasons why like i have resolve the mourner in here to ensure that we can get these champions revived when we need to but you know with even with with nia even with the myth that's a very high likelihood if i take one of those support champions out to bring in a ronda the chances of us really surviving goes down a lot. And one of the other difficulties of bringing in a damage dealing champion is once you get to the boss, that actually stretches out. It can actually make, you know, things problematic because then you kill the, you do too much raw damage. You're not laying poisons or HP burns to it. The minions come back and it can just be a whole, whole rigmarole of trouble. So that becomes an issue, right? And these terror beasts are a problem with their uh, reflect damage that they'll eventually put out. So. There aren't ideal champions on this account to really take this boss down and take it down smoothly and quickly. One of the ways I generally like to do that is bring in like a Battle Khazar or, you know, a uh, uh, Urogrim or somebody who can do a lot of healing and a lot of poisons, consistent poisons being the main key. And by doing that, enable us to, uh, you know, really survive and have success. That's not going to be the case here. And so it's definitely going to be a little bit more limited as far as our approach goes um, and just slower overall, but it works and it works consistently. So let's uh, I'm going to try and skip through some of this and we'll just jump to the boss so you can see a little bit of how that works. And then we'll uh, we'll just kind of move on to the next dungeon because this is this is long. OK, so here we are at the boss. Um, you can see we're going to, you know, do our best to get some damage out here. Um, but those minions are going to be problematic. They're going to place that heal reduction, they're going to place that decreased defense. But because we have so much support around, I'm not as concerned about that. So our first goal is going to be taking those minions down, and then it's going to be trying to put up as many poisons and debuffs on the boss as possible. Um, obviously, you know, just based off the champions we have, the number that we have, the fact that we have ally attack, we are going to be, able, we are eventually at some point, it's going to proc the uh, big slam from this boss, right? It's kind of an inevitable thing that's just going to happen. The frigid vengeance that will happen from time to time. But we have enough support here that we can survive it. And that's going to be the main key uh, going through this. But the more things we can, the more poisons we can get out there, more HP burns we can do, the better it is because hopefully we can pass those thresholds, not from raw damage, but from that passive damage, which is going to be a great way for us to you know survive this. And we don't have a lot of major damage healers. Like Farrakhan can hit pretty hard, and Sweetring can hit pretty hard right now. Um, obviously, War Master procs do a lot. And there you go. We bring all back the enemies. Um, that Frigid Vengeance does come back from time to time, but we have enough healing, enough protection where it's not an issue. Um, and it's happening infrequently enough because we're not doing as much raw damage uh, to really proc it. Now, again, I think I would probably want to take Sweetring out or Farrakhan out, maybe even both and bring in more pure poison champions, right? People that can put up two or three poisons as an AOE consistently. That would be the ideal way to go about this. It'd make the approach with the boss a lot faster. You can see Ursala has to revive somebody. It would make everything a lot cleaner as far as, you know, taking down the boss and the consistency and not having to worry about reviving the minions nearly as much. So that would definitely be my approach if I could, but obviously we're not in a position to really pick and choose based off the champions we have. We have to work with what we got. Not only that, but we also have to work with the gear that we have. And one of the best ways to do that is just focus on the champions we're actually using already 
and build them up you know if we have some specialized champions for here like again like an earl grim maybe that's somebody that we do look at building up specifically for this dungeon and can add a lot to it um but we don't have a ton of gear options to make that work right so in the meantime this is going to be a solid team and work really well but as we develop further bringing in somebody that can kind of fill one of those roles would be a great addition and if they can bring in some healing then maybe we can bring them in instead of a Demitha, instead of a White Dryad Nia, and actually bring a third damage dealer to this to actually speed up the runs of the waves and maybe speed up the damage that we're doing to the boss himself. So as I said, it's not a fast run, but it's successful, it's effective, most importantly, it's consistent. And then we come to Fire Knight. Now you might have noticed all these three dungeons we're talking about, Dragon, Ice Golem, and Fire Knight, they're very similar in their approach. We have two waves of enemies. We have to get through those and find ways to, you know, be successful against that. And then we have to get to the boss and prepare for that, right? And so the boss part is where you see the differentiation, right? The ways you can use dragon as a template, and then you have to substitute out or bring in champions, deal with the boss along the way. And that's kind of the difference between the dungeons. Now with Fire Knight, obviously the boss has that big shield, so we need multi-hitters. So Rhonda is absolutely a godsend for this one. Cold Heart is an excellent choice as well, especially because Cold Heart does some turn meter reduction. It can be really, really clutch for us. Um, and that's definitely something that we want to be able to utilize as best as we can. Um, and so that's going to be really good. Now, on top of that, obviously, we have some, you know, minions we need to get through, and AoE decrease defense is going to help a lot. I really, really do like Sui Ren. I think she brings a lot of utility, not only with the decreased defense, but the weaken as well. Uh, also has a, you know, poisons on the A1. All that's going to be really good when we get to the boss himself. I could bring in Ghostborn. Now, I think Ghostborn is actually an excellent choice for this boss, right? The pretty irresistible decreased defense debuff that he has. It also brings an increased attack buff. Has things like heal reduction. So definitely at higher levels, Ghostborn is going to be a champion we're definitely going to be wanting to look at. But right now with this squad, I'm not as... I don't feel like we necessarily need him. And the biggest issue is he's not built tough enough. We don't have the gear to really get him to a point where he's going to be able to survive these dungeon runs and I can substitute him in. He's going to do more damage than Sui Ren, so he's definitely somebody that I would like to use, but right now, not a really great option. And so I'm not. And we're going to focus on Sui Ren. I think it's going to be a really successful run as a result. We also have Ursal the Mourner, who's going to bring us that you know, that uh, revive ability like I've talked about, which is going to be important because we are probably going to lose a couple champions along the way, uh, but also the decreased attack, and that's good. And also as important, has that turn meter reduction on the A1. That's going to be really helpful when we get to the boss himself. And then the Mytha, obviously, to help keep us alive also. And so it's kind of a good combination of champions and approaches here that I think this should work really well for us. Um, like I said, I think Ghostborn would be an excellent substitution and maybe a preferred one here, but simply due to the fact that our gear for Ghostborn is going to come secondary to our clan boss champion, not going to be as well built, not going to be able to survive as nicely. We don't have a lot of accuracy to get the other benefits like his heal reduction and his decreased defense on his A1. So I just felt like Sweet Rune was going to be a better, a better choice overall. Um, but this one is not as bad as Ice Golem. Because we have more damage dealers in the actual team, we're able to get through the waves a lot faster. So it's a lot similar to what we're doing with Dragon right now. We rely a lot on Ronda to be able to take down the enemy and push through. Uh, Cold Heart is not built particularly well. The big thing I wanted to focus on was accuracy. Um, and this is what I built her with Fighter in mind, really. Um, and then dropped her in here. Accuracy was a big focus there. So, and a, an appropriate amount of crit rate. We don't have good crit damage um nowhere near where she can be as far as a cold heart build goes but it's a good starting spot i feel like and gonna be effective for us but really we just needed to get to the boss we're relying on ronda we're relying on sui ren to kind of get us through these waves and that's gonna be the big thing and they're gonna be able to do it it's not super quick um but it is gonna be effective enough now again i think ghostborn actually would be more effective against the waves with i think he has a couple of aoe skills that's actually really helpful when you're trying to, you know, take down multiple multiple waves here. Um, but Sweet Run's doing just fine for us, and Ronda especially is really, really good for this. So, um, yeah, we just gotta gotta get to the boss.
Okay, now we're at the boss. One of the big things is obviously just taking down the shield as best we can. Thankfully, we have enough multi-hitters here where that's not really an issue for us. It's just going to be about the turn meter, you know, controlling that. And that can be a little bit tricky, obviously, getting all the skills timed out right. We're not going to be perfect with that setup right here. But because we have a lot of multi-hitters, it's not much of an issue. And then once we get that cold heart hit that reduces the turn meter, it allows us to really start placing all the debuffs that we could want on this boss. One of the important ones is going to be the heal reduction from cold heart which we're not going to get right away. So obviously, you know, there is going to be some RNG as far as, you know, how this run works, you know, getting the timing of everything to go down. But generally, this should be a pretty consistent run. It's not much of an issue for us to even get through the shield. We have the heal reduction. We have that decreased attack. Now, you know, we just have a few other debuffs from Sri Ren we want to get put out there. And at that point, we should be in really good shape. But uh, it's just going to be, you know, a matter of time, really. And that matter of time is going to determine how quick the run is nothing nothing fancy about it we're really letting ronda and coldheart do all the damage here maybe not an ideal situation but you know it's where we're at and it's gonna have to be the one that we're we're utilizing here um and so that's kind of the idea behind this team um and you know as far as i can tell it seems to work pretty decently not a game changer by any means but that's kind of the idea with the series is this is how you go about doing it regardless of the champions you have this is the champions that happen to be on this account were able to have success and you know it's just about the taking the right approach and making the right builds there we go success it's not the fastest run but it's effective and getting all these dungeons to stage 20 is such a huge boon for an account like this because now we don't have to deal with four star gear anymore it's all going to be five star gear so you know if it's a decent piece you're going to be able to keep it and that's such a huge huge thing for these accounts so 100 percent, i definitely recommend definitely definitely recommend you know this kind of you know growth on your account and prioritizing getting the stage 20 on all these dungeons can be really really helpful um but we got one more to look at so let's do that real quick all right the last dungeon we're going to look at here is uh okay the last dungeon we're going to look at here is spider now i had to build a couple champions specifically for this one of them is mordecai because we're going to get aoe hp burn the other one is cold heart for this and everybody else is here just to keep them alive right the mytha white dryad nia and our of the morning it's very similar to what we were doing with ice golems right it's all just about surviving and that's all we need and with the hp burn because there's so many spiderlings out there that's honestly enough we don't even really need cold heart but cold heart does something really really helpful which is reduce the turn mirror of the boss spider and that is really helpful for us so that's kind of the big, big approach. And so when I'm building both of them, I'm just looking at their accuracy, their speed, and some survivability stats. Damage isn't going to be nearly as important. Um, this is a pretty decent speed on this run. This is definitely something that's more farmable. And that's kind of what you want. Spider and Dragon, especially early on in the account, are going to be super valuable. That's where you're going to get most of the things that you need. But you can see, we get the HP burn, we reduce the Terminator to Spider Queen, and that's great because it allows all the Spiderlings to go. Every time they go, HP burn ticks. Every time that happens, the boss takes damage and we're able to progress. This is obviously, you know, this isn't hard mode. This is all very easy stuff um, for most people. But if you're an early level account, this can be really, really challenging. On my free to play, I'm not even at this stage yet because I don't have any HP burn champions whatsoever. Very frustrating for me. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be, I think, really, really successful um and consistent and having white dread nia actually is a really nice boon for this especially with mordecai in the lead not only does his aura help us with accuracy i think but also nia is going to be able to reset his cooldown on that hp burn ability so we're able to get it out again and that's actually really helpful for us so this becomes a nice combination of champions that we're using here uh with nia with demitha with ursala uh, we have all the sustain and survivability to carry for our champions to make this kind of a team work. And we can actually do this in a pretty decent time here, which is great, right? Even if Mordecai goes down, Ursala can bring Mordecai back. We do have a cleanse with White Dryad Nia. We do have the block damage from Demitha. And so there's a lot of really nice potential to making this work. Um, and, you know, you can mess around with the cooldowns of the or the priorities of the skills to kind of time some of it, especially when it comes to, like, you know, Demitha and White Dread Nia and when their skills are actually happening. And see, we extend after we put the, the ally protection on, we got the burns going, and we're right at that edge of actually making it work. Boom. Minute 51, 
not even my best time we've done it faster but it's very very effective as you can see and so now we're going to be able to get five and six star accessories and that's crucial to building your champions better right you get speed on those banners that can be really important more importantly you get, and you get crit damage on the amulet and you get a bunch of other stats coming through that can help your champions survive which is actually really really vital okay so let's take a minute and look at the champions and how i built them obviously you can see ronda in relentless and i really focus as much on damage as i could right that's where her value is going to come in for this team you don't have any other really big aoe nukers on this account there is a royal guard who definitely could be a really good choice there's a kale as well so there are a couple options right there's a there's a husk there's a, there's a few options but as far as like you know most utilized best utility i think ron is going to be the best option here um, and so putting her in relentless was just like really nice to be able to do that. And so that's what we opted for. And as you saw, she's really good for fire Knight. She's really good for the wades, especially against dragon and overall, just a really nice build here. We also have Demitha, obviously a super carry. Now she is in our clan boss team. So having her speed, having her built the way we do is just fine right now. We can obviously roll up all this gear. A lot of it is rank 12 and not, you know, super high up. That's fine. There's lots of room to improve this. The thing is, though, it shows that you don't need a ton of stats when you have good protection around, right? She's got like 3,500 defense, you know, 40, not even 40k HP. You don't need tons of stats to survive some of this stuff as long as you have appropriate healing and buffs to help. Um, and so, you know, I think she works really, really well for what we want. Obviously, a little bit slower. Um, you know, usually I'm going to try and aim to get my champions around 200 speed for dungeon work. She's definitely under that, but still effective all the same. And so it shows that you don't necessarily need your champions crazy fast to be able to take down some of this content. White Dryad Nia in a very similar boat to the Mytha. Uh, they're both in bolster set, obviously. Um, we have an immortal set on her as well. And she's got obviously a lot of HP, a lot of defense. This is how I like to build my ally protection champions. Um, but her speed is, again, relatively low. Uh, you know, obviously for clan boss, this is why we have her at the speeds we do. It's why we have the masteries we do. But um, again, this shows that you don't have to be super crazy fast to be effective. Obviously, I'd love to have her faster than this, but it's going to work. She only has three turn cooldowns on skills, and that's uh, that's going to be sufficient for us. And then we have our Saul of the Mourner, the last of our uh, you know protection champions, our carry champions. Again, pretty decent HP. I would love to get that higher. Pretty decent defense. I would love to get those higher, but you can see the amulets, the the ring, the amulet, the banner. None of those are really rolled up because we don't have great pieces on the account. And because we're just starting to hit Spider Twenty, I figured it was worth it to wait to get actual quality pieces before we spend the silver to roll them up, right? And so that's going to be what I would be looking for there. We do have a bit of accuracy on her for a decreased attack, which is a super vital ability, and that turn meter reduction. Um, so I would build her with some of that, but is more where i would actually like to have my builds for my carry champions around 200 speed even faster than that is good there is really no cap on speed for your carry champions they're the ones putting out the buffs to keep your champions alive so the more turns they take the more buffs we get out there the better your team is at surviving definitely something i like um and in general this is going to be a very solid build having some inbuilt healing with that bolster set is really really crucial all right we have sweet ren here just like in the clan boss build, it hasn't really changed hardly at all. I think we've swapped a couple pieces to give her a little bit more survivability. But, you know, one of the things I would love to do is, again, up that accuracy. About 200 is great for Nightmare Clan boss, but we really wanted to get it closer to 250, generally for general dungeon work, as well as Ultra Nightmare Clan boss eventually. So, obviously, that is somewhere where we can definitely improve the stats that we have currently on her. Um, but in general, you know, this is kind of what we're looking at. Uh, I think her defense is fine. About 2,500 works really good for this dungeon work. But our, obviously, our HP is a little bit low. We really want to be over 30K with all of our champions um, just to make sure that nobody's getting targeted unfairly and that they can survive the targeting that they do get. So about 2,500 defense, 30,000 HP is kind of what I'm looking for on these champions. Obviously, the speed lower than I want, but it's definitely doable here. And with Mordecai, it's kind of a quick build. We have to kind of toss on what we have. Um, obviously, I would really like to get the HP, the defense up a little bit, but these are actually pretty decent numbers. Um, you know, he does a pretty good job of surviving. The more we can improve it, though, the better he'll do at that. And obviously, the speed, the faster he goes, the more often he's going to be able to place HP burn. One of the big things with him is making sure that he has enough accuracy to land it. And so that's why we're aiming for that 
250 accuracy or so, we definitely hit that. And that's kind of the biggest thing with him. All right, we've got Farrakh in the fat here. Obviously, we want to maximize uh, what we can get out of him, but you know, this is a clan boss build. So there's gonna be some limitations on there. His attack's pretty low, but he does have the HP we're looking for over 30K, the defense we're looking for over 2,500. And obviously the speeds are you know limited by where we're at with clan boss. His accuracy is a little on the lower side, 186. Again, really aiming to get over 200 accuracy, really like 250, 225 for these dungeon bosses at stage 20. So this is definitely on the lower end of things, but it's fine, it kind of works for us. Um, obviously if we can bump that up, we'll have even more success. And then the last of our champions that we're gonna be able to use here is gonna be Coldheart. Look, no banner. Again, we're still waiting for the, that appropriate gear to drop. And that's gonna be huge for us, right? If we can add a banner, add more speed to our champion, more HP would be really nice because we're barely over 20,000 HP right now. And that's definitely an issue. You saw it in Spider where she gets targeted. You saw it in Fire Knight where she gets targeted. So building that up more would be really, really beneficial. Getting that crit damage amulet rolled up would be helpful. We have a crit rate glove on her, which is definitely not recommended. Um, I would really like to have crit damage on her. She has an extra 30% crit rate too. So the hard part was getting the accuracy balanced with that crit rate and adding crit damage. We just didn't have the gear on the account. So I had to make some sacrifices and I prioritized her turn meter reduction over everything else. And I think that's what you want to do because that's going to be way more valuable. We had Mordecai to do the actual damage for the spiders. We had, uh, you know, uh, Rhonda to do the actual damage for the Fire Knight. I didn't need her for damage as much as I needed her for the turn meter reduction. Adding the damage, though, would be really, really nice and can open up a lot of possibilities as far as approaches to taking down these bosses. Now, obviously, there are other champions on this account, and there's multiple ways to go about doing this stuff. I have a Royal Guard here who I would have loved to have ranked up and used for things like Dragon and maybe even, eh, probably not, but maybe Ice Golem as well. Uh, there's definitely some possibilities would be great for Fire Knight also. The hard part is we just didn't really have the gear to build these champions up the way they should be built up, right? And so that becomes the hard part is like, you know, I have to choose who to build up. Since we had five champions committed from Clan Boss, that makes those choices a lot easier. If I have champs built up, let's use those first, and then we can add more champions when we have the gear for it. We don't have the gear currently to really be able to utilize a Royal Guard properly, right? Uh, but when we do, that'll be a huge boon. We can bring Royal Guard into things like Fire Knight, into things like Dragon, and dramatically speed up our runs with those max HP hits and the abilities that he brings. So. These are definitely things that we want to be able to do down the road, but we just weren't able to maximize right now. And so that's, you know, one of the things is as we look at these teams, as we look at these approaches, we also want to look at, okay, what are ways that we can improve this, speed this up and make it better going forward? And so, you know, I'm, you know, when I'm building these teams, I'm keeping an eye out for that. A lot of times we had at least two carries in White Dryad Nia in the Mytha. Sometimes it was Rosal of the Morna. Sometimes we use all three understanding that and knowing, okay, well, look, maybe we're going to have to balance this out a little bit, right? Maybe we're going to need to, you know, limit one or the other as we go forward. Maybe we can bring in somebody else instead. That's going to depend on a lot of factors. Can we build our other champions with more survivability? If we can do that, then yeah, we can probably swap one of them out. Is the champion that we're going to keep in there going to be sufficient to keeping everybody alive? That's a real question. I don't know that we have that kind of a champion on this account, right? An Elva a Silva Drake, a Duchess, those are the kind of champions that you really want to use for these kind of roles. Without them, we might be stuck to at least having two of these guys in here, but you know, we can always swap them out too if we get better options coming down, down the future as well. So uh, that's kind of the approach. Hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully it was enjoyable for you guys. I like doing these things because I feel like the understanding of how to improve your team is really really important and i want to kind of talk about my approach through this uh one of the things by the way with spider i would just like wipe the waves i just kill the spiderlings over and over i used ronda until we got to about stage 17 and then i had to strategize then i started bringing mordecai and really utilize the uh mechanics of the boss to be able to beat it and that's going to be the best approach right early on just kill the spiderlings just have a lot of aoe damage it's going to be the best approach and then eventually You'll, you know, once you get into the later parts, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
that's when you're going to want to strategize and bring in either max HP champions like Coldheart, like Rogard, like Husk, or you're going to want to bring in uh, HP Burn. Either way, it's going to work really nicely. So anyway, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Hopefully this was a, a little bit informative and kind of shows my approach to building these teams, um, you know, especially early on. This is a really early account, and it was really fun to kind of go in here and, you know, figure out, okay, how do we do this with the limits that we have, but both on our gear and on our champions. And I think we did a pretty good job. So anyway, you know, starting at, you know, level 12 for some of these dungeons, 14, 15, 16, and now we're all the way up to 20 on all of them, I think is a really good result. So anyway, guys, that's all we got. Hopefully you enjoy this until next we meet. I'm the Deadwood Jedi. Thank <laughs> you.